Hi, this is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to Krypton Report. I just want to remind you real quick, if you love shopping on Amazon and you want to support Southgate Media Podcast, if you go to southgatemedia.com, there's a portal where you can log into your Amazon from there that a portion of everything you buy on Amazon goes to Southgate Media to help support that. So it's a great way of helping out now on with the show. Hi, this is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to Krypton Report. Welcome to another episode of the Krypton Report. Today, Janine and I will be discussing the episode entitled... Strange Visitor from Another Planet. Yes. Directed by Glenn Winter. All right. So this episode kicks off with like this over narration that's really interesting because you're not quite sure who or what it is. And, you know, you find out it's a letter to Adam. Yeah. That Kara sent on behalf of Cat Grant without Kat knowing that she sent it. So that's really, really interesting. Ooh, plus we had this really um, interesting dynamic between Kat and Wynn in this episode, so. when poor guy, the ultimate friend-zoned man. We get introduced to Miranda Crane, the senator, um, who's here in National City. And this is the episode where we get to meet the White Martian. Oh, yes. And what is interesting is, you know, White Martians are the sworn enemies of the Green Martians. They're they're bigger, they're badder, they're meaner, they're scarier. But yet, in the comics, Genia, who's a White Martian that we know and that we love? We had this conversation (laughs) from Young Justice. Yeah, Miss Martian. I just yeah. I guess, I'm totally forgetting her name right now. Which there's a line later on in this episode where he says there's more of us. That makes me wonder: Are there more white Martians on Mars? Is it possible down the line that we could see McGann? There it is. Yes, McGann. <sighs> McGann, which gets translated to Megan. Megan. <laughs> <laughs> just like John gets translated to John. John. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, like, I was like, that's an interesting fact. I mean, just the whole Miss Martian idea, like, you know, this show is very girl power. <laughs> so, like, yeah. I mean, there's even rumors floating around where people are hoping that they bring in, uh, a Barbara Gordon, maybe a Batgirl on the, sh- like, a, on the show or something to have her team up. I could kind of see that. I love Kat in this episode. Her whole dynamic of, uh, the way she, just the way she is with Adam Mm -hmm. completely changes, like, takes her off guard, the hard exterior, like, and he just shows up. Everything you think and you know about Cat Grant kind of changes here. You know, she just kind of lets down her wall a little bit more and you see this vulnerability that she's never shown before and you're like, oh, Cat's not this, you know, she, she's stoic not, creature completely. Like she's actually, she's not the girl of steel. <laughs> yeah, seriously. The maiden of might. Nope. Now, interesting little fact, my wife, the actor who's playing Adam on here, do you know who he is? He is Kara or Melissa. Melissa's real life husband. Which is interesting. Cause I mean, you think it'd be extremely easy to play. Okay. Melissa, okay, ready? I need you to pretend like you love this guy. And <laughs> action. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> M- Melissa, you're not giving enough. We, we, we need more intensity from you. We, we sell it. The, sell it. The sad part is that has happened with real life celebrity <laughs> couples when they're actually on screen together. So, true story. I feel like if you and I ever got cast in something, they'd be like, oh, you guys are cute. Uh, you make a great brother sister combo. What? We're married. Oh, it don't matter. It's TV. 
I'm like, That's true. great. This is awkward. Great. <laughs> Say <Is that> Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be like, okay. You guys are going to be the new Ross and Monica. That's a friend's reference for people who might not get that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get back to the show. I mean, I really like Cat. Like, what's so great is Kara is not afraid to take risks at times with Cat. Whenever, like, she's afraid of Cat, but at the same time, she's willing to try something. I think that in the beginning of the series, she was very afraid of Cat. You know, now she respects Cat and she understands Cat, but she's not necessarily afraid of her anymore. I mean, Kat. you know, she. She's able to step out of her comfort zone and do something for a cat that nobody else would even imagine doing. Right, because everyone else, like... Because everyone's terrified. <laughs> so. It's, it's really adorable. I, I love the relationship between Cat and Kara. It just really... <laughs> Kara or Kira? Kira. <laughs> Kira. Kira. <laughs> I'm telling you, like I've always said, if she ever found out that they were the same person, she'd be like, and Super Cruelly is Kira. Yes. Everyone would be like, who? Yeah. Now, I do like this little rally they have going on. The anti-Super Girl rally? Yeah, and the DEO is out there, pretending to be the FBI. <laughs> Doing their job. Being behind the scenes and watching everything and trying to save the world without people knowing. The DEO is so interesting. Yes. I feel like DEO is almost like, it's like the men in black. Yes, it is basically the men in black. Mon- R.I.P.D. <laughs> Monsters are coming for your family, and as she says that, the white Martian appears. And I'm like, yeah. The thing is, you have, just like anything else, you have good aliens, you have bad aliens. But if you hate all of them, you're going to scare off... And make the good ones not want to do anything. Yeah. Oh, look. It's Jimmy. I like that he has the signal watch. Now he uses it for Kara. Do you ever think he goes off and Cal's like, damn it, Jimmy. <laughs> like, like I told you, man. And then he's like, oh, no, Kara. I feel sad for John right here. Like, he freezes in that quick shot of the Martian. Like, just enough to give us the back story. Flashbacks. You know, of, of a little bit. Like, he just freezes, and that's fear. And boom, Supergirl's on the action. You know what's crazy if you think about it? This show has a better budget than Superman 4 did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't talk about that time. No, we don't. We don't talk about Superman 4. Hey, as a child, I liked Superman 4 because he fought the nuclear guy. didn't realize how terrible it was. Exactly. <laughs> and it was always seen the one that was always on TV. Uh, but I wonder why. <laughs> it <was> cheap. cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Cheaper to air. <laughs> um, but this is, I mean, this is legitimate. Supergirl sw- sw- swoops in and saves the senator. I will say, upon our first viewing, I did have my re- reservations. I was like, mm, that just seemed, why is she alone? Like, that just seemed too, you know, odd. And my thing is, John Jones is a Martian Manhunter, like, is very powerful. Yes. And you would think he would recognize the white Martian, but I think the whole point is he's afraid. That like, one I feel it, like he was distracted, too. He was distracted, and he's afraid. No. I mean, it also, like, he talks about him having to concentrate to keep the Hank Henshaw form. Um, but I just feel like... That would keep him not being able to, you know, happen. Now, let me, you know, like this show, okay? The DEO is based outside National City, okay? Mm-hmm. Fort Ross, I guess, crashed somewhere close within proximity of National City. Somewhat, okay? Yep. It's kind of like that whole thing in Power Rangers where you're always like, why does Rita always attack the exact same spot every time? <laughs> like, yeah. why does all the alien things happen in National City? Because it's close by. You know, like... Because you, Fort Ross is close by. Maybe Fort Ross is more like a, you know, a beacon that just draws everything in. 
Now see, that I like. Kind of like the idea of like in Buffy, you had the Hellmouth. That's why all the stuff happened around there. Yeah. And then in Teen Wolf, you have the Nematon. That's why it draws everything there. But then you have shows like Supernatural where stuff's happening everywhere and they have to travel. Right. Okay? It's kind of like that. Like, Supergirl's protecting National City, but, you know, the rest of the world could probably use her help, too. But, you know, it, it's probably going to get more interesting. And you do have to think about this, too. She talked about this before. Superman is patrolling the rest of the world, basically. You know? Oh, yeah. Supergirl's trying to do her part, you know, where she is. So... I think she doesn't really necessarily want to step on Superman's toes. I mean, I wouldn't, you know. True, true. But I just think it's funny that all the aliens are like, hey, we escaped. You want to go attack National City? Sure. But I bet you there are other storylines going on behind the scene, you know, it that would be Superman co- is taking care of. It would be cool if there was, like, some sort of, like, dialogue where you see DEO teams out and about bringing in other prisoners just in the background, you know? Yeah. Stuff where we feel like they're doing more than just whatever pops up next in National City. Well, I mean, we do know that they have other prisoners. You know, they've talked about it before. You know, they have other prisoners in their facility that they've taken care of, and we don't know when they've taken care of them. So it's very possible, you know, the show definitely leaves it open for interpretation. Let's just say that. So. Yeah. I agree. I mean, it does. I mean, it does leave the show open for interpretation, but it's just one of those things. Like, how close-minded is our view of what's going on around everybody? Mm-hmm. I think that this show is going to take off more, and that Supergirl is going to end up saving the world. Like, I think that it's going to expand to other parts of the country and save the world, you know? And I can see I can see that. Um, one thing that I always kind of wonder, just because the way they kind of play Superman in this, is, are you familiar, Jenny? I know we talk about a lot of stuff, but, like, the idea of, like, the infinite crisis in the comic books? I don't... Uh, I mean, I feel like we've talked about it. I just don't remember exactly what we There's a very famous cover of one of the Infinite Crisis, because the first Infinite Crisis is when Supergirl died, and so did Barry Allen Flash, and it's Superman holding Supergirl's body because she died saving everything, Mm -hmm. and my thought is, what if they did something crazy on this show where they do like a reverse Infinite Crisis where it's Kara holding Superman's dead body? That would be very interesting. And now she has to take the burden of 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 what he had. That would be extremely interesting. So, um... I like right here where Jimmy, with, you know, playing with the photo, sees the white Martian in certain light, the eyes reflect. Yeah. And then it does the nice cutaway to showing the the good senator, her eyes reflect. And I'm like, come on, John, you could have, you could have seen this coming. I feel like, I feel like he did to a point. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like he could feel the thing being close by. He just couldn't hone in on it. Or maybe he just didn't take the time to focus to hone in on it. It's all about... You have have to think. And we've talked about this before. If he doesn't use his muscle, Mm -hmm. you know, for lack of a better term, if he doesn't use his ability on a regular basis, it gets rusty. Just like our talents and abilities do, you know, we have to practice. We have to work on them in order for us to keep up with them. So he's just rusty. That's the way that I take it. And I can, I can back you up with that. Like He's been so afraid to show or do anything that's out of the norm. I bet he suppressed a lot of his abilities and stuff. And he doesn't know exactly how to bring him back up. Not you using know? him for so long and... Spending so much time pretending to be Hank Henshaw. Yeah. And it, I'm trying to remember if he said something else. Um, you know, he's trying to live like a human, which makes me wonder if, uh, as it goes on, if we'll see more of the Martian's powers. Yeah. Oh, man, why am I yawning? Whew. 
we have a one year old. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the whole fight scene of like in the DEO is pretty freaking awesome. It really is. Like she just like rips through there and the senator, you mean? Yeah, the the she, white Martian senator. Yeah, she's super intense. I mean, she, uh, she sells it. Like you know, sometimes like no offense, like but like they cast sometimes these female actresses who are supposed to be BA, and when you see them, you just you just don't believe it. Yeah. No, she she's selling it. Definitely. She definitely is. Oh, I love how much Car uses her heat vision. I always said that if I was Superman, like, because you can attack from far away, like, I'd totally be using my heat vision as a first, like, layer of attack. Like, boom, blast you. I think there's a lot of times, too, that you as a viewer, you don't realize how many different abilities, you know, Supergirl or Superman has when you're watching, like, movies and shows and stuff. Because they don't always get the chance to show all of their abilities. But, like... I think that this show, Supergirl, is doing a great job at showing her, you know, variety of abilities. Yes, I agree. Like, I mean, in like, for instance, Man of Steel, okay? He used his strength, his flight, and vulnerable skin, and then we saw Heat Vision... And I think he used his hearing. But he didn't use his super breath. But he's yet to use his super breath. Yeah. Okay, he's yet to use any of his other kinds of vision. And they only did the hearing, I think, the hearing and the x-ray vision in a flashback. Yeah. You know, they haven't really focused on any of his other powers. Like, do you think in the writer's room for this, they have like a list, like, okay, car's powers are this. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Because they have to remember. I mean, when they do the Martian flashback, and you see all the Martians, and John's telling his story, uh, it's just, it's heartbreaking. And it's just the way they're enslaved. It's very reminiscent of the Holocaust to me. Yes. Everything that we've seen and heard. You know what would be awesome? Is if they did an episode with John in the past where they, where he does flashbacks to the 19, like, 50s, like in the comics when he originally came or whatever, mm-hmm. and we see him getting pulled from Mars by the, the scientist doctor whose name I cannot remember, and he shows up, like, you just kind of see that, like, how, what it was like when he first got here. Yeah. Like, that would be an awesome flashback. So this, this episode, I think, does a fantastic job of showing his past. And just his humanity, like, for a Martian, like, his compassion, you know, and his, his heart, his heart, his honor. Like, he's a great character. If anyone's out there listening who hasn't watched the Justice League or Justice League Unlimited, please check it out. Watch it on Netflix. Like, he is a character that you immediately will like and you'll just really enjoy. You know, the sad part about those shows, I think there's a lot of people out there that look at them because they're cartoons and they're like, oh, that's, you know, for a kid. That is not necessarily the case with these shows. Well, like, there's so many, like, adult themes and undertones and it's done very, very well. Well, like, well, you know, since you say that, like, that my dad was never one to watch a lot of cartoons with my brother and I. Like, he would kind of sometimes in the background, maybe, but he would always sit down and watch um, Batman the Animated Series with us. Yeah. You know, he would always sit, and he had no problem watching that show. He actually enjoyed it, and it's the caliber of the, of the series itself. And Justice League Unlimited... Yo, it's very much so on that high caliber. It's it's a continuation of the same universe, which is awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing that Superman the Animated Series, Batman the Animated Series, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, and Batman Beyond all exist in the same universe. 
all of them are su superbly written. And, you know, for me, I've gained a lot of knowledge watching those shows, for sure. That's where a lot of my knowledge lies. <laughs> Nothing so. wrong with that. I do like that with this episode, Kara has someone who's kind of flirting back with her. You know, it's, it's already like, she likes Jimmy, Wynn likes her, you know, and then all of a sudden, this other person shows up. Like, you think, you think, uh, Jimmy and Wynn be like, dude, dude, we were here first. No, there is some jealousy there. Oh, yeah. They're like, we don't care that you're our boss's kid. We're gonna beat you down, man. There's definitely some jealousy for Jimmy. I think there's like this one shot in the show where like Adam walks by or they're talking about Adam or something and Jimmy just has this like look of just complete disgust about it. He's just like, oh gosh, no. So anyway. That's a that's a interesting side storyline that's going on in the midst of this white Martian craziness. It's just it's just interesting to see Kara, like, someone be interested in Kara, you know? Yeah. It's pretty neat. Who doesn't she didn't know, have to become Supergirl in order for someone right. to be interested in her. Who doesn't know her other side. Mm -hmm. But in all fairness, Wynn did like her before she revealed herself. Wynn's a good guy. That's why. Yeah, Jimmy's the interesting one because, you know, he found out she was Supergirl and then fell for her. Well, he already knew she was Supergirl before, you know, before she knew he knew. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Now, see, it does show that John does, remember, he does have his telap, telepathy, tel... <laughs> <laughs> Telepathic, wow. <laughs> it's like tilapia. It's fish power. <laughs> he does has his mind powers. Telepathy. And because he's communicating with uh, the White Martian, mm -hmm. the red eyes are just amazing. I do love it. Now the White Martian is really interesting because the White Martian has like these white, white yellow eyes almost. It's really cool. <laughs> I'm just like. John has like, I have these red eyes. I don't know what that was about. I don't know what that was about either, no. <laughs> but it's, it's I don't a, remember him saying that in the uh, episode either. It's such an easy effect to achieve. <laughs> yes. We, you know, because we know that the whole reason why he's Hank Henshaw the most is budgetary reasons. Because <laughs> they can't keep him in the makeup. Because it's a combination of makeup and CG. Yeah. So they're like, we'll just keep you as Hank. But when we really want to kind of show that you're John... Well, uh, make your eyes red. I think it's a great idea. I mean, it saves money and everything like that. They're trying to be frugal with the show. That's, that's great. Hey, save on budget. That's cool. We get it. Well, I mean, yeah. It keeps them on air, which is very important. It it's is. the only way you and I get to do our job here. It's true. True story. <laughs> and thoroughly enjoy it. I just, I really am loving this series so far, so... The series is great, you know, because it slowly picks up more and more. With each episode, you know, it had a little, it was good when it started, a little rough, but then it just keeps getting better. You know, everything that we see is better. Yes. It, it is cute how this starts with, um, Adam. And he's like, I think I'll stick around. Have you seen Kara around? And then he, he, he did get the whole Kira or Kara. Like, he's like, what, what, what's your name? It's <laughs> pretty cute. She's like, oh, it, it's Kara, but it's Kira to your mom. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Uh, uh, you, you, you know, you're really pretty and, uh, 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 I, I like your teeth. Would you like to go on a date with me? an interesting way to pick up chicks. Did you do that in high school or something? No. Just look at him. Look at look at his mannerisms. He's like, hey, what's up? We look we look cute together. <laughs> I mean, I would hope so. They are a real couple, so. <laughs> I like how she doesn't even realize he's asking her out. She's like, oh, considering that in the pilot she's on a blind date and the dude is a tool. Yeah. 
It's pretty adorable. And I like how Kat's like, she's available. She, what? Oh, I am? <laughs> yes. You may go. See, my my worry with this is it's going to get awkward between her and Kat if anything goes bad. Yeah, I mean, that's always the risk of dating someone at work or connected to work. Well, so then you it's your boss's son that she's trying to, like, you know, rekindle a relationship with. And you're going to date her son, like, right off the bat. Like, that's kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, that's kind of ballsy. You know what's funny about the end of this episode? When, when the two sisters are just sitting there eating ice cream? Hmm. I thought that was just a TV trope until I met you and your sister. Then I realize women actually do that. Surround, eat ice cream, talk. Yes. I'm just like out of the. Ice cream's amazing. Out of the. It brings us sisters together. Out of the cardboard. <laughs> out of the cardboard. <laughs> hey, yeah, you know what? Funny. Never just sit around and eat ice cream with my brother. So this ending is a little creepy because they're sitting there and they're watching this, you know. Where a random supergirl, quote unquote, comes and picks up a car off the side of the bridge, looks exactly like her, and she's like, what the heck is going on? It's really freaky. Uh, I love the way that all these episodes, like, started now where they, the end of one leads into the beginning of the next one. Yes. Like, they're all connected. It's great. It keeps things really nice and consistent. So. Yes. I really like this episode. I can't wait to see the next one because I know what the next one has in it. Mm-hmm. They advertise as Bizarro, which I think is sweet. But I'm always afraid, like, they're going to do too many Superman tropes. That was a concern of mine as well. Like, I don't... I want... And I've said this from the very beginning... That I want this to be a standalone thing. Like, I want her to be able to stand up on her own two feet and be completely separated from Superman. For the most part, you know. That's why I was always so iffy about him showing up on the show. I mean, I know they've barely done him on the show. Like, they could have had a line or, I don't know, like, he's off-world or something. Like, and she's here. I mean, so far it's good, but still, I was kind of like, why isn't he around more, you know? But... I get that. I think one of my biggest issues with Supergirl, because I haven't always been a Supergirl lover. You know, I've always liked her. You know, I just haven't always been crazy about the character. You know, she's fallen way too close underneath of Superman's shadow. And, I, I mean, there, there's such a thing as, like, being similar, and that's good. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, that can be good, and that can, you know, you can still develop your character and everything. It would be very interesting. But then there is such thing as being too close to the character, too similar. And then it's just like, well, why did you even create this character? It's basically Superman in chick form, you know. And I didn't want that to be this series. I wanted it to be different because I wanted I think- to see um, more depth to her character. I was afraid that they were going to go too much like Superman. And that's where they're, I think with the DEO and Alex and all that comes into play to really change that up. Oh, yeah. And to give us that character. But when it comes to villains, stuff, you're always like, who's she going to fight? Who's a... There is no kind of... You say Supergirl, you automatically think this person. Yeah. You know? Well, it's... I do think the one thing that they're struggling with, if anything, are the villains. And the reason why I say that is you have Maxwell Lord. And I do find him to be a very interesting character, but he is very similar to Lex Luthor. Yes. You know, you have... We're going to see a Bizarro. You know, how close is this Bizarro going to be to Superman's Bizarro? You know, are we treading the line... Too close. Exactly. You know, I just, I fear that. They really need to have some villains that are able to stand on their own two feet as well as the main character. And that's where, like, the Fort Ross things come in. I mean, they've had some. But even, like we've said before, with Non and Astro's kind of like a Zod, stuff like that, 
we need to carve out our own straight up Supergirl villain. Well, I do have to say I really liked this particular episode for the fact that we had the White Martian. That was a different villain. Yes. That I was agree. something that was a little bit more unique and a little un- unexpected. You know? Because it was, it was more of a, a John villain. And she was helping part of it. Yeah. And it was, I don't know, I, I just, I found it neat because a lot of viewers, you know, like myself, prior to watching Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, I wouldn't even known that there was such a thing as a white Martian. You know, I wouldn't, I personally have never really known a whole lot about Martian Manhunter's past who Martian Manhunter was until I watched that series. You know, so there are probably a lot of viewers that are watching this show that are just like, you know, this is new to them, and it's exciting because it's new. So. I agree. I think that was smart. Any other final thoughts on this episode? Uh, it just, it was a good episode, once again. I love that it dove into, um... John Jones' character more. We got to see more of the depth of, you know, why he is the way he is and you know who he was compared to who he is now, um, and why that all happened. It's just a very neat episode. All right. Well, until next time, look up in the sky. <laughs>